this is actually a pretty easy one because, um, <laughs> look, if you make a mistake, own it. Uh, the, the worst thing you can do if you make a mistake is try and avoid taking blame for it. That's the worst thing you can do. And if you think about the bosses that you've had, and you had some boss that made a mistake and he's like, no, it wasn't my fault, you just totally lose respect for him. So you can't do that. You gotta take, you gotta take ownership of it. Um, because and if, again, if you think about the bosses that you've had and the times that you had a boss that made excuses, you don't have any mercy on them. You're just ruthless on them. Mm-hmm. You just pick them apart. Mm-hmm. So that's step number one is, um, you know, take ownership if you make a mistake. And that's how it's always seemed to me from as I looked up the chain of command. You, you know, if I saw a guy that made mistakes and then he took ownership of them, they're like, okay, cool. The guy's, you know, he knows he made a mistake. Cool. We'll, we'll support him. If they're doing the other thing and they're blaming everybody else, they're not taking ownership, you're going to have a hard time with it. And as a matter of fact, I actually had a mutiny in in one of my platoons where this is a long time ago I, it's you know all the names are long since forgotten but we had a we had a a mutiny in our platoon where we said you know pretty much us us lower enlisted guys we had a we went to the we literally went to the commanding officer and said we don't work with this guy Dang. yeah so, you know, all these ideas that people have of the, you know, military and of, you know, we obey orders and all this yeah. stuff. I mean, think of what a little jackass I was. We, you know, we say, well, you know what? We don't want to work for this guy. We're going to go to the commanding officer and tell him we don't want to work for this guy. Mm-hmm. And the commanding officer, to his full credit, he was like, listen, guys, you can't have a mutiny. Not at my command, not at my team. You guys suck it up. You figure out a way to work it out. Mm-hmm. Go do what you're told. Get in line. And then he fired the guy. <laughs> yeah. No, but he, he like basically made it perfectly clear. Like this is your one chance. Mm. And he fired him. Dang. But it was, it was, it was pretty crazy to see, to see it happen. But, and I say this all the time, it wasn't because the guy lacked tactical skill. It wasn't because he wasn't physically fit. It, most of the reason was because he just couldn't take anyone's you know, advice, he wouldn't listen to anybody. Mm. And so when he was making a mistake, it was like, no, no, we'll do it this way. No, Mm. it's okay. Constant cover up for himself. Mm. And obviously it, it didn't work out for him. But I think the commanding officer, I think was really just doing the right thing, saying, look guys, you can't have a mutiny. Doesn't work that way. This is the military. Get back in there, do what you're supposed to do. And then he was like, okay, I gotta fire this guy because he must not be good to have every enlisted guy in the platoon come forward and say i don't want to work with this guy yeah yeah. that's not a good sign so the commanding officer did an outstanding job and he was actually a great great commanding officer too it worked on the dl i guess as echo would say and then i actually the guy that took over was one of the best guys i ever worked for if not the best dang yeah it was pretty awesome um and then as far as regaining trust which is the other part of the question it's almost as soon as you admit that you made a mistake, you are automatically regaining trust. That's where you start yeah. regaining trust, yeah. and it just goes from there. Then you follow yeah. through with what you say. You know, you're constantly trying to build trust and relationships. That's what you're trying to do. And the minute you're lying to people, how are you building trust? Right. And if you make a mistake and you say it's not your fault, then that's a lie, and everyone knows it. Yeah, that, that fear is, um, especially, not especially, but in regards to regaining trust, so to speak, um, you know, when someone admits mistakes, they have that fear that, oh, they're going to think I don't know what I'm doing yeah, or I don't matter. have a handle on this, you know? So doesn't matter. It yeah. so doesn't matter. It's so much better to go, hey, guys, I don't really know how to do this. Can you show me how to do this? I'm not sure. I've never done this before. Right. Or, hey, never. I've never used this kind of weapon before. Can you give me an, an indoc on this thing? Right, right. The worst thing you can do is step up to the line with a weapon you've never used before and not know how to lock and load it or clear and safe it and look like a yeah. total idiot. Because then you look like a guy that is too arrogant and too insecure to ask. Yeah. It's actually it's actually a sign of insecurity if you can't ask when you need some help with something. There's a big difference there. Yeah, and totally. Uh, totally true. But it is definitely better just to you know ask and say hey i don't know that insecurity the, the when you don't feel like asking something that's a little knock at your door that yeah, says oh yeah. you're insecure 
<laughs> you're insecure. Yeah, yeah. When you're like, hey, you know what? I don't know how to do this. Can you can you be a hand with this? Or hey, I'm stuck on this problem here. Can you can you give me help with this? Because I don't know how to do it. Mm-hmm. People don't say, oh, this guy's an idiot. Unless you're doing it every three sentences. Because right, that means right. you haven't studied. Yeah, yeah. Because you got to study. You got to know your trade. You got to know your craft. <laughs> and if you don't, you got to sure. learn it. Yeah. You know, you got to break out the books and mm-hmm. get on it. But once you've broken out the books and now there's a little bit of stuff that you still don't understand, well, guess what? Right. Just ask the question. Yeah. Because your frontline troopers are going to know more than you. They should know more than you. Yeah. You know, it's, it's highly likely that they don't know more than you. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was a radio man for eight years in the SEAL teams. And by the time I was a lieutenant commander in a troop, I didn't know as much as those, you know, guys knew about all the new radios and stuff. So I just had to ask a question. It's no big deal. Yeah. If you're secure in your leadership, you're you're fine to ask a couple questions. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. But you are not clear to lie to people. You're not clear to make excuses. And that's what that's how you regain the trust is by telling people the truth. <laughs> it's really a simple concept. Yeah. Let's talk about something I don't talk about enough. Hard work. Or I have the three H's. Humility, honesty, and hard work. So, as far as that goes, you gotta be honest with yourself. Are you smart? Are you not smart? Are you in good shape? Are you not in good shape? Are you fat? Whatever you are that you're not happy with, it takes a lot of hard work to improve that about yourself. For me, I wasn't smart, wasn't the best athlete, so most people could study for an hour while studying for six and seven hours for a test. To run 100 mile races, I had to put in 120 mile weeks. Somebody was putting 70. For the pull up record, I failed three times. I did six to 7,000 pull ups in eight, nine months and still failed. At the end of the day, hard work may not be enough. You still may fail. Just stay at it and go ahead. Well, another early morning for me. Um, I've always hated these mornings. I start waking up at like four o'clock in the morning and looking at my shoes for 30 minutes. When I weighed 300 pounds, I had to lose uh, 100 pounds really fast. And so I had purpose then, you know, I was losing the weight. And then purpose was trying to be an Navy SEAL, and then purpose was trying to be an Army Ranger. And then purpose was trying to do these 100 mile races or 50 mile races or 200 mile races. And um, I often struggle sometimes in the morning to get up this early to find purpose to continue doing this. I'm 42 years old now and I've done most of the things I want to accomplish in life. And I guess uh, my purpose in life now is, is attitude. I want to start the day off, and I still hate it. I want to start the day off with the right attitude. I don't want life to come at me. I want to make sure that I'm physically trained for it. So 